Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. John Kelly, Profiler here, and welcome. Welcome to the beginning of a new year in 2019. And we're going to have a lot of interesting videos for you. You know, we're going to kick off the year focusing on a case that's very close to my heart. And it's a very, very sad situation. We have two young girls up in Delphi, Indiana, about a year and a half ago, that were found murdered. And it's extremely upsetting to me because I constantly, and our group constantly, looks for various cases that are going around the country that we feel are serial predators. And in looking at this case, going back almost a year and a half ago, I started to think to myself, wow, you know, there's no sense in us even getting involved in this case. This case is going to be solved pretty quickly. It's going to be solved sooner than later. And of course, I'm talking about the case of Libby German and Abby Williams. And the reason I thought it was going to be solved is because Libby German actually got a picture of the major suspect involved here and also got a sound bite of his voice. She recorded his voice when he said, down the hill. So we got a picture and we got a voice recording. So I thought for sure this guy's going to get caught a lot sooner than later and that'll be the end of him. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Here we are in 2019 and we're still looking for this guy. We have not been involved in this case at all. We've talked to some people about the case, uh, and we're not in the beginning of uh, doing a profile, or I should say, we're, we're in the beginning steps of putting a profile together, but we need a heck of a lot more information. However, that doesn't mean we don't have some questions. And something to keep in mind is that most of the time, the power is in the question. <clears throat> what I'd like to look at, and I'd like you to take into consideration, is the people that put a lot of time into this case. You have a lot of people out there that are very concerned about the deaths of these young girls. And our condolences go out to the families and go out to the community. This is, a, a, as I said, a very sad situation. But there's a lot of people out there that want to help. They've contacted us. They are very engaged in everything that they can find out about this case. And they need to be congratulated because they're doing this on their spare time for no money. They're just volunteering, volunteering their services any which way they can to try and help out. And I'd also like to bring out law enforcement. I think law enforcement is doing everything they possibly can on this case. At least that's the way I feel. I mean, I can't even imagine somebody from law enforcement, a cop, not wanting to catch this guy. This guy who killed off the innocence of Libby German and Abby Williams. So anyway, again, the power is in the question. So let's start to look at this case and let's start to ask some questions and see exactly if we can come up with any answers and where it takes us. You know, usually in these cases, you have what I call the usual suspects. I mean, you have people popping up all over the place that you would have never heard of before, never considered, but they do. They pop up in every case I work. There's usually suspects that come out of the woodwork. And really, the vast majority of them are not the guilty party. What we're looking for here is we're looking for proof and we're looking for concrete evidence that's going to lead us to the guilty party. Yeah, you're going to run into people of interest, like I said, the unusual suspects. But a good cop is going to go out to eliminate the suspect. If you're on to the right person, you will not be able to eliminate him and your case will only get stronger and eventually you'll bring him down. 
The one thing we have to be careful of here is embellishing. You do not want to embellish a, a person as a suspect and try to put a square peg in a round hole and, um, you know, and, and it turns out they're not the person. So you want to be very careful on, uh, you know, any kind of uh, guilt slinging here, if you will. It's very important to follow the evidence and to eliminate people uh, and, and to keep a focus on elimination versus embellishing. You know, the other thing is that's interesting to me, and again, these are all questions, is the control zone. I mean, this guy coming down that path is able to get these two girls to follow his orders and go down the hill. Now, how is he able to do that? How is he able to do that? Was he brandishing a weapon? I mean, let's face it. You know, for somebody to order two girls down the hill and for one man to try to take on two young girls can be challenging, especially if he's a little older because the girls can split up, they can run away, they're younger, they're faster, they can take off. So did he have a weapon? What was the weapon he used, if he had a weapon, to get them to go down the hill? Was it a knife? Yeah, you know, kids aren't dumb. They know knives don't shoot bullets, so they can run away. However, it's a possibility a knife was a weapon. Could it be he had a gun and pulled out a gun? And then kids figured, well, hey, I can't outrun a bullet. Let me follow his orders and do what he says. Because usually the way these guys follow it up is, just do what I tell you to do, and I'm not going to hurt you. I promise I will not hurt you. I've heard these lies over and over and over. And this is how they gain control of their victims. But still in all, two victims at once, that's quite a feat. It's quite a feat to try and gain control of two people at the same time. Usually, you will see this in a situation where a predator will give two girls a ride and get them into his car, which will be his control zone. And he'll have much, a much better chance of controlling them in a more uh, compartmental situation where he has, uh, he has them you know, in, in uh, a car where he may have a weapon and it's easier to be up close and personal and control them. So the bottom line here is, where did this guy get the experience or the nerve and the gall to try and take on two victims at one time. That tells me he's probably worked his way up to this or done this before. He has some experience in this. That's very scary to me because that tells me he's probably killed before. If he killed them, I'm sure it's not his first time out. He probably has a number of victims in his past. And what that tells us is that he's going to have a number of victims in his future. The man that killed these two women, take my word for it, the only way he stops killing is if he's dead or incarcerated. At this point, that's the way I personally feel about this situation. You know, the other thing that I'm concerned about is this bridge guy. I mean, where was he coming from and where was he going? Were there any murders of young girls before Bridge Guy in that area? And how many murders have there been of young girls after Bridge Guy in that area? Do we have a local predator that lives in the area? Or do we have a transient predator? Someone who's transient and traveling through the country maybe riding the rails, maybe homeless, maybe living off the grid. <clears throat> and, you know, many of these guys live in the woods. They like to, to be away from society. This is part and parcel of their antisocial personality disorder. 
So they stay away from society. They just go about the country and they just travel. And they try and travel in rural areas because they don't want to be around society. They don't like people. So that's something else. That's another question. You know, what happened before Bridge Guy with uh, young girls up there, if any were uh, raped or murdered, versus after Bridge Guy left? Because this guy's not going to stop. Wherever he's gone, I mean, uh, he's going to continue to act out. It's only a matter of time. You know, the other part of it is, you know, the familiarity uh, with the area. How familiar was he with that area? I mean, he says down the hill. Okay, so down the hill, the girls go. And down the hill, he goes. Now, did he know that area? Uh, or was it just happenstance that he realized that down the hill would be out of sight from anybody else that might be walking the path. So we have to take that into consideration. Again, looking at, is he transient coming through or is he a local guy? The other thing we need to know is, you know, uh, why hasn't anybody identified this guy yet? Especially if he was local. I mean, you've got a sound bite. I know it's not a long sound bite. It's not a great sound bite down the hill, down the hill. But it is a sound bite nevertheless. You hear his voice. You also have a picture of him. So the question I have, and the power is in this question, why has he not been identified? Especially if he was a local kind of person. He, I, I think he would have been identified right away, and that's what I thought in the beginning. However, if he is antisocial, if he ever is, uh, if he is a homeless guy, if he is living off the grid, then he's not living where other people, a lot of other people are, or where there's a lot of media. I mean, let's face it, if you're on the rails, or you're living in homeless camps, or you're living in homeless shelters, how much media attention is going to be there? I mean, especially in rural areas, in the woods, or riding the rails, there's no internet, there's no TV, there's no other people that are uh, watching anything through the media and can identify him and call him in. So that's something that I'm thinking about as well, you know. You know, the power is definitely in this question. How come nobody has identified this guy? Well, maybe it's because he doesn't hang around people. So if he doesn't hang around people, which his antisocial personality would support, then how would anybody really know who he is or get a good look at him? Or, you know, if he is hanging around other people that are like him, that are homeless, living in the woods, or riding the rails, or living in shelters, I mean, how concerned are they about media events and again, you know, how are they going to recognize and report him? So I'm just saying, to me, there's something very, very wrong here. Why we have a picture, why we have a soundbite, why we've actually heard his voice, and nobody has really put the finger on him yet. Okay, that's of concern to me. So I think if this guy's moving... If he's transient and uh, he's uh, moving in areas uh, where there's not a lot of population or extremely rural, it's going to be very hard for him to be identified. And, you know, if he's riding the rails, you know, God knows where he is, uh, you know, just uh, hopping trains. Time will tell. He will eventually get caught. I'm just afraid he's going to get caught after he commits other murders. And believe you me, this type of person will, as I said, unless he's dead or he's been incarcerated. You know, the other question I have is, you know, when you lived a transient life and 
you're constantly moving, which we've seen most of these serial killers are transient, um, or I would say uh, quite a few. Maybe I can't say most, but I could say quite a few are transient, and that's why they're very hard to get, they're very hard to catch, because you have what's called a stranger on stranger murder, or in this case, stranger on stranger murders, and it's very hard to keep up with somebody, especially if they uh, are a day ahead of you. And, um, you know, uh, Libby and Abby weren't found until a day later, so this guy got a day head start. God knows where he went or where he could be. And maybe, maybe he's local. Maybe, uh, maybe law enforcement there is on to a really good person of interest at this point. And somebody they're considering is a real suspect. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, they arrested somebody tomorrow locally either for this, for these murders. Uh, but you got to understand, it's been so long with such a plain view of what the person looks like and a sound bite. And uh, my gut from looking at him and viewing at him on a warm day in October up there and all the clothes he's wearing. And, uh, you know, uh, in another life I uh, worked, uh, you know, at a hospital and uh, we dealt with a lot of homeless people coming in for the winter. You know, and that was usually the rule of thumb. As it heads towards winter, they come into the hospital to get out of the environment in the, uh, in the northern states because it's freezing. Or they'll hop a train or hitchhike or whatever and they'll go south where it's warmer and they can continue to live outside. You know, so it depends on if the person is staying, staying in the northern part of the country where they will need to seek shelter, whether in a hospital or in city shelters. Could he be in a city shelter? Could he have been in a city shelter? You know, that's a possibility, too, if we're talking about a homeless, transient kind of person. Or was this somebody who could have been homeless, transient, and he's heading south for the winter. So he's just following the path till he gets to the next set of rails where he can jump on uh, a train, a freight train, and uh, head south. Again... We have to go over all these different possibilities to come to a conclusion. And I'm sure law enforcement has gone over these. And I'm sure they're not going to stop until they catch this guy. And these families, these families deserve justice. Don't believe in the word closure. Closure is not going to replace a loved one that's been murdered. These families are going to go on seeking justice, and they will find justice, I'm sure, but they are never going to have closure because when you lose a child, you have an eternal hole in your heart. I'm convinced. I've counseled many parents that have lost kids. They'll cope with it better over time. And they'll go on usually, especially if they have other children that they can focus on. But that hole in their heart will never heal. Even when we catch this guy, even when law enforcement puts the cuffs on this guy, they'll get justice. But that hole in their heart will never heal and they'll never have closure. That it just is, is a word that shouldn't be used really, um, in seeking justice uh, for murder cases, because closure never takes place. The other thing I'm concerned about is, you know, when they were, when, when he was coming, where was he going? We had him coming, and so we can have an idea of what direction he was coming from, but where was he going? See, that's the other question. I mean, to me, uh, that's a major, major question, you know? I mean, if we don't have murders before he showed up, we don't have murders after he showed up, 
where was he coming from and where was he going? The other side of this for me is I think we're looking at and 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 we would probably start off the profile if we get around to a profile we would start off with uh, what we have here and what we have here is I believe an unorganized killer who came across some victims of opportunity Libby and Abby because I don't see a whole lot of organizational skills. But don't forget, I don't have a lot of information into this case. The bottom line is, you know, this guy tells them to go down the hill, then they go down the hill. I understand there's a creek not too far away. So that tells me if the police believe there's some DNA that this guy is really not a sophisticated predator. Because if he was sophisticated, and there's a creek not too far away, why would he have not put the girls in the creek to get rid of any DNA? So that tells me, you know, this guy's no brain scientist. He's not uh, a brain surgeon. He's not going to be doing any brain surgery anytime soon. This guy just got lucky. Uh, and it was the wrong place, the wrong time, I believe, for Libby and Abby. Sad, very sad to say. So the focus is we have an unorganized killer we know for sure who looks like he came across two victims of opportunity. And the other thing is I'm, I'm really not seeing any kind of motive here as far as robbery goes. And I'll tell you why I say that. Because why would he not have taken the phone even to dispose of it? Why would, not, would he not have gone through Libby's personal stuff to grab that phone and do something with that phone? Why leave the phone with her? See, that doesn't that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me either. I don't think it was uh, even an afterthought to him. I don't, I don't think that uh, he put any kind of uh, planning at all uh, into this. I don't see any organizational skills at all being used here. I mean, the most important thing is we're looking at a, a non-sophisticated, uh, unorganized defender that I believe is probably transient, but I can't bet on that. And this is why this case is so extremely hard to profile. Um, I, I more of me believes uh, he's transient, um, but we cannot say for sure. What we can say for sure is this bastard got to go down. Okay, this son of a bitch got to be taken off the streets. There's nothing to be said, nothing, nothing to talk about. He's got to go down sooner than later. Because if he's not in jail or he's not dead and he's out there, there's going to be some other young girl or girls that's going to fall victim to him, that are going to become prey to him and that he's going to kill. So, anyway... Those are some of our questions, some of our ideas. Um, you know, we're just getting uh, started and taking a look at this. And uh, certainly we're open to any of your comments. Um, but I would like uh, any comments that uh, you think are helpful uh, to be focused on you know, if the person was more transient or the person was more local, please do not give us names of people you think are responsible or you think are people of interest or suspects of any kind. That needs to go to law enforcement. We cannot put the cuffs on anybody. Um, 
we can just try and uh, pull this apart and uh, with a little bit of information we have, try and uh, see what we can, uh, what we can formulate here. Um, but if you have any names uh, that you think should be given uh, to law enforcement, please give them to law enforcement. Don't give them to us. We can't arrest anybody on this, okay? We're not involved in this case technically, and we're not working for law enforcement. We're not working for this law enforcement organization at this time. So please call them with your tips. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Make it a great year. Thanks for all your support and subscriptions, and stay safe out there.